blend of the sweet aroma of freshly baked bread and the bitter taste of confrontation lingered in my life, a duality that shaped the existence of my children and me. I, Lily, was no stranger to the barbs and venom of my mother-in-law, Barbara. Each day was a strategic play, ensuring that my little ones, Emma and Alex, were shielded from the storm their grandmother brewed persistently. One sunny afternoon, as the children laughed in the backyard, my heart wrenched at the sight of Barbara approaching our home, her eyes reflecting the usual spite. She wore her wealthy widow persona like a cloak, a stark contrast to the modest life I had built. Oh, Lily, still stuck in this little bakery of yours? I wonder, does it not sadden you to know you could never provide as my son did? Barbara sneered, glancing condescendingly around my shop. My fists clenched, yet my voice retained its calm. The children and I are more than content, Barbara. We find happiness in the simple things, something you might not comprehend. A sinister smirk played on her lips as she knelt to Emma and Alex, her voice dripping with feigned sweetness. My darlings, Grandma comes with tales of your wonderful father, a man whose shoes your mother could never fill. As I subtly motioned for the children to go inside, Emma, wise beyond her years, hesitated, glancing between Barbara and me. She sensed the unspoken tension, and it was a burden I never wished for her to bear. Barbara continued, Your father provided a life of luxury, a life where you would never know struggle. But alas, in his absence, your mother's incompetence shines brightly. Alex, the gentler soul, tugged at my dress, whispering, Mama, why does Grandma say such things? I knelt down, gently cupping his soft face. My love, sometimes people say unkind things because they are unhappy within themselves. We must show kindness even when it's hard, okay? A nod from Alex and a protective glare from Emma were met with Barbara's scoff. As I ushered the children inside, Barbara leaned in, her voice a harsh whisper. You may poison their minds against me, Lily, but they will eventually see the truth. Despite her bitter words, I stood tall, my voice unwavering. They will know the truth, Barbara, of love, honesty, and kindness, something you may never understand. Days turned into weeks, and Barbara's attempts to turn my world upside down only intensified. Whispered words to Emma about how I was the reason their father was gone, and covert attempts to sabotage my little bakery became a frequent ordeal. One evening, amidst the chaos of dinner preparations, Emma spoke up, her voice trembling slightly. Mama, did you make Daddy go away? My heart sank and the simmering pot on the stove was momentarily forgotten. I sat down, gesturing for them to come to me, enveloping them in a comforting embrace. Oh, my dears, no, no. Your Daddy loved us very much. Sometimes terrible, unexplainable things happen, and it's no one's fault. Alex chimed in, his voice barely audible. But Grandma says... Tears stung my eyes as I gently lifted their faces to meet mine. Your grandma is very hurt inside, and sometimes hurt people say and do unkind things. I will always tell you the truth, and the truth is that I loved your daddy very much, just as we all did. Emma and Alex, with their innocent eyes glistening, nodded, finding solace in the sincerity of my words. As the days progressed, the children became my fortress— our bond unbreakable amidst Barbara's relentless attempts to dismantle our peaceful existence. Little did she know, her actions were weaving a tapestry of her own isolation and downfall. The pivotal moment came when Barbara, in a desperate attempt to discredit me, orchestrated a scene intended to portray me as neglectful. A fake call about Alex being in an accident intended to lure me away, while a welfare officer, randomly checked in, was meant to find Emma alone at home, but Emma, astute and perceptive, called me, her voice steady, yet laced with concern. Mama, something's wrong. A lady is here asking for you. But I remember what you said about strangers. Rushing home, my heart raced, yet I found Emma and Alex, safe and sound, explaining to the officer about their grandmother's deceitful schemes. As Barbara arrived, expecting a scene of chaos, she was met with the stern eyes of the officer and my children's unwavering stance beside me. The attempt to tarnish our unity failed miserably, and Barbara, for the first time, glimpsed the unyielding strength of the love she tried so hard to destroy. Little did she know, the seeds of bitterness she sowed would soon entwine around her, leaving her ensnared in her own venomous web. As I hugged Emma and Alex tightly, whispering words of love and pride, 
I knew that our battle was far from over. But we stood, unbroken, ready to face whatever storm Barbara would conjure next. Life has an uncanny way of weaving tales of triumph amidst treachery. As the days melted into a semblance of routine and quietude, the shadows of Barbara's malevolence lingered, ever-present yet unseen. My children, Emma and Alex and I, found solace in the sanctuary we built, a fortress constructed on unspoken understandings and unwavering trust. One chilly evening, as the embers of the fireplace danced, casting a warm, flickering glow upon the room, Emma, with eyes reflecting a myriad of unspoken questions, approached me. Her voice, a gentle whisper, cracked the silence. Mama, why does Grandma hate us so much? My heart, heavy with unshed tears and unspoken tales, found solace in their innocent curiosity. It was a question laden with years of suppressed narratives and veiled truths. I, Lily, inhaled the warmth of the fire, and with a steady voice, began unveiling the mask that had shielded them from the torment of the past. Sweethearts, I began. Your grandma doesn't hate us. She's enveloped in a cocoon of her own pain and bitterness, shadows of a past that clings to her soul. And sometimes, pain disguises itself as hatred and anger. Alex, his eyes pools of confusion, snuggled closer. But Mama, why does she say mean things? Why does she want to hurt us? A sigh escaped my lips, and my mind wandered to a time where love and anguish intertwined seamlessly. Once upon a time, I began, my voice a gentle caress. Your daddy and I found love amidst the chaos of opposing worlds. He, bathed in wealth and privilege, and I, a simple girl with dreams that stretched beyond the horizon. Flashbacks of love-filled glances and stolen moments with Mike painted my memories, a stark contrast to the disdain that emanated from Barbara. Your grandmother, embroiled in her beliefs of status and societal norms, couldn't comprehend the love that bound your father and me together. To her, I was the thief who stole her son, leading him astray from the path she had meticulously crafted. The children, enraptured by the tales of yore, listened, absorbing words that painted pictures of love, rebellion, and heartache. Emma, her voice steady, questioned, Did Grandma always hate you, Mama? With a nod, I continued. She saw in me the antithesis of her world, and when your daddy left us, in her pain, she found a target in me, blaming me for every misfortune that befell her and her son. The tales continued, weaving through moments where love blossomed amidst hatred, where each loving glance from Mike became a balm to the wounds inflicted by Barbara. And as the tales unfolded, so did Barbara's mask, revealing the scars and bitterness that marred her soul. Days turned into nights, and the tranquility of our haven was shattered by the venomous strike of Barbara. Her schemes, once veiled in subtlety, now reeked of desperation and blatant malevolence. One afternoon, as the sun dipped beneath the horizon, casting shadows upon our abode, a knock echoed through the silence. Barbara, her eyes ablaze with untamed fury, stood at the threshold. The children, witnesses to the storm that brewed, stood steadfast by my side. Barbara, her voice a venomous hiss, spat. You think you've won, Lily? You believe your tales of deceit have shielded you and these children from the truth? My stance, unyielding and resolute, faced the tempest before me. No, Barbara. I've only ever spoken truths, something you might be unfamiliar with. Your war has never been with me, but with your own demons and insecurities. A scoff escaped her, and her gaze, piercing and cold, met mine. You, Lily, will crumble, and I will ensure that these children see you for the monster you are. Her words, intended to wound, were met with an unwavering calm. You've tried, Barbara. And yet, here we stand, unbroken, united against your malevolence. It's time for you to face your own reflections, for we will no longer be pawns in your twisted game. With a venomous glare, she retreated into the shadows, defeated yet unbroken. And as the door closed, severing the tangible connection of our entwined fates, Emma and Alex embraced me, our bond a testament to the unyielding power of love amidst chaos. My tales, intertwined with pain and triumph, became a beacon of truth amidst the treacherous storms crafted by Barbara. Little did she know, her attempts to dismantle our unity only solidified it, creating a fortress that stood tall against her relentless onslaught. 
time, an invisible weaver, threads moments of joy and sorrow into the tapestry of our existence. As the years cascaded like a gentle river flowing towards an uncertain horizon, I, Lily, found tranquility amidst the tempest left in the wake of Barbara's chaos. My children, Emma and Alex, blossomed into vibrant, compassionate beings, their spirits unmarred by the bitterness of the past. Our little bakery, once a vessel of our sustenance, had flourished into a haven where the aroma of freshly baked goods whispered tales of love and resilience. Yet the specter of Barbara lingered, a distant shadow eclipsed by the radiant light of our unbroken bond. Her world, once adorned with the opulence born of wealth and status, crumbled into a desolate abyss, sculpted by her own malevolence. Her health, frail and yielding, mirrored the isolation that enshrouded her existence. One frosty winter's eve, as the embers of the dying fire cast a dim, flickering light upon the room, a hesitant knock echoed through the silent corridors of our home. A silhouette, feeble and defeated, stood at the threshold, the remnants of pride barely veiling the desperation that flickered in her eyes. It was Barbara, a ghost from a past we had long buried. Her voice, once a venomous hiss, now quivered with vulnerability. Lily, she whispered, I find myself ensnared in the web of my own doing, my world a desolate wasteland of regrets and brokenness. Emma, her spirit a reflection of the strength and kindness we had nurtured, approached, her gaze unyielding yet devoid of hatred. Why are you here, Barbara? Have you come to sow seeds of chaos once more? Barbara, her eyes pooling with unshed tears, shook her head, a silent plea escaping her trembling lips. No, dear child. I come, shattered and defeated, seeking solace in the one soul I sought to break. My heart, a fortress against her malevolence, softened, not with pity, but with a quiet understanding of the pain that cloaked her being. You find yourself alone, Barbara, not by the doing of others, but by the path you yourself carved, a path where your pain became the architect of the pain you inflicted upon others. She nodded, her gaze meeting mine a silent acknowledgement of the truth that lingered unspoken between us. Lily, I find myself at the precipice of my own demise, and I come to you, not seeking redemption, but a morsel of the compassion that I so vehemently tried to extinguish. Alex, his demeanor gentle, spoke, his words a gentle caress upon the wounds of our entwined fates. We have lived, Barbara, not in the shadows of your hatred, but in the light of the love and resilience that blossomed amidst your chaos. A silence, profound and echoing, enveloped us, as Barbara, her spirit broken, awaited a salvation that lingered just beyond her reach. I, with a calm resolve, spoke. We will not extend the hand of salvation, Barbara, but we will offer a lesson, a beacon in the desolation that you now navigate. Emma, her voice a reflection of the strength that had become our legacy, continued. You will not find redemption here, Barbara but you will witness the triumphant echo of our existence, an existence that persisted despite your relentless onslaught. As Barbara, defeated, retreated into the shadows from whence she came, we, unbroken and triumphant, stood as silent sentinels to her departing figure. We had chosen not the path of vengeance, but of silent victory, offering her a glimpse into the world she had tried to shatter. Days melted into weeks, and as the first buds of spring kissed the world with vibrant hues, we visited Barbara, not as avenging specters, but as living testaments of love's triumphant echo. She, now a frail entity, confined to the solitude of her existence, gazed upon us, the realization of her defeat etching deep lines upon her visage. Alex, with a gentleness that belied his strength, spoke. We stand before you, Barbara, not as broken beings, but as the embodiment of the strength and resilience that you could not extinguish. Emma continued, We offer you, not our hatred, but our pity, Barbara, for you will depart from this world, not with the satisfaction of our destruction, but with the bitter taste of your own defeat. As we turned, leaving Barbara amidst the ruins of her desolation, we knew that we had triumphed, not through vengeance, but through the unyielding power of our unbroken spirit. Our love, resilient and eternal, had become a beacon in the darkness, casting a light that shattered the shadows of Barbara's malevolence. And so we lived, our days a vibrant tapestry of love, strength, and resilience, 
our spirits forever unyielding amidst the tempest of the past. Barbara, a distant echo, faded into the annals of forgotten tormentors, her existence a mere whisper amidst the triumphant tales of our unbroken bond.